Hello beautiful ladies and welcome to today's video of The Scoop. So last week I launched the first episode in this series which I call The Scoop and I kind of described it there but I thought I would just give you a brief overview in case you missed it. It's our opportunity to talk, catch up, and just chill out like we were in a coffee shop. And I'll just let you guys know kind of what I've been up to this past week and then you guys can totally share what you've been up to in the comments. I like to spend a little bit of time down there and communicate with you guys and hear about how you're doing. So I'm really excited to get started with today's video so let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is a little bit of pop culture stuff. So Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner just had a baby. Joe Jonas is from the Jonas Brothers. I don't know if you guys watched him on Disney Channel growing up. I know that I did. <laughs> he was in Camp Rock and he and his brothers did that song, The Year 3000. I think it was a cover actually, not their original song, but I remember jamming out to that when I was in middle school. <laughs> And Sophie Turner is probably most well known from being on Game of Thrones and they got married in May of 2019 and they just had a baby. So of course everyone was talking about that. They named their daughter Willa, which is a very pretty name I think. I think it's beautiful. And I always love hearing about celebrities who take the more traditional route where they get married and then have children. It makes me very happy because I tend to think that these people do have influence and so if they're going to be living their lives very publicly, very openly, it's nice when they choose to do something that's inspirational for young women and young men and they choose to do something that is more traditional so that maybe they do influence somebody to wait until marriage to have children. Actually all three brothers did get married and none of them have children so I'm sure they're going to all be doing a more traditional route for their families which I think is really nice. The Jonas Brothers growing up they wore purity rings. They definitely were a little bit more on the traditional side. I think as they aged out of Disney Channel they decided to become less traditional but evidently they still have traditional values because they all got married and didn't have children before they got married. So that's pretty cool. Funny story actually, the oldest brother, Kevin Jonas, he used the same florist for his wedding that my husband and I used, <laughs> which I found out when I went to their store and they obviously have that on like a little pedestal, a little stand showing that, oh, we did this for a celebrity, which was really funny to find out. <laughs> now I did talk about in a tweet last year that I'm not the biggest fan of the video that came out with the three brothers and their wives. I felt like it was a little bit more about the lust aspect of their love, not what marriage is actually about. But the fact of the matter is they did do the right thing. They all got married. They all waited to have kids. So I can't criticize them too much for that. And of course there is lust in marriage too. It's not to say that lust is just totally off the table, but it's a little bit different when it's in marriage than it is otherwise. And I don't feel like it necessarily reflects on marriage in the best way if the reason that you marry someone is for lust. That was my take on that a year ago, but as of now, I'm very happy that they had children. I'm happy that they're all married and I think it's a really, really nice thing that the whole Jonas family is kind of following that more traditional route. Next up, I wanna talk about my trip to Kansas City. So my husband and I went to Kansas City this past weekend and we did a little bit of touring around. So Kansas City is about three hours away from Omaha. So it's not the easiest thing to get to, but it's not super far either. It's definitely doable. We just hadn't had an opportunity to do it yet. So we decided to go for the weekend and it's always really fun to see a city that you've never been to. So I wanted to say a few of the highlights that we saw while we were there. And also if anybody has recommendations for other places we should visit while we're there. Maybe we'll get a chance to go again. I'd love to hear those thoughts because all of the research that I was doing was only what I could garner from the internet. So I'd really love to hear if you guys have any recommendations, if you've been there, if you live there, whatever it may be. So our first stop was the World War One Museum. I thought it was really well done. It was a lot to take in, a lot of information, but it was really well laid out. They have a really good audio guide, which I really appreciated. And from what I understand, it's the only World War I museum in the country. So that's pretty crazy that there's only one and it's only three hours from our house. So we decided to check that out. I'm really glad we did. I learned a lot and it gave me a deeper understanding for why World War I happened because very often World War I is just kind of glossed over like this was just some crazy thing that happened and World War II seems to have more of a clear, you know, villain and hero as far as the allies and the Axis. But 
World War I had its reasons too, and I don't think it's taught very well in schools, so it was good to learn even more about it while we were there. So I'm really, really glad that we went there. It's very impressive and it has a lot to offer. Next up, we went to the Power and Light District. So that is super cool. So next up, we went to the Power and Light District. So basically what the Power and Light District is, is this really cool area filled with different shops, bars, whatever it is that you're interested in, restaurants, and it's all lit up and it's really cool downtown area. And one of the really, really awesome parts of it is there's this big outdoor seating area that has a roof covered just in case it rains, but it is mostly outdoor. And all of these restaurants and bars kind of circle it and if you sit in the middle, you can order from any one of them and they'll bring out your food or your drinks, which was really cool. And they had this huge screen right at the front and they were playing the UFC fights. Now, if you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you probably know that my husband really loves UFC and he was the one who got me into it. I'm obviously not as much of a fan as he is, but I really do like watching it with him. It's kind of a fun thing. So they had that up while we were there and they also had live music. So there was live music playing while the UFC fight was going on, but it was just a really cool experience. Experience. It's a really cool area and if you're ever in Kansas City, I would definitely recommend hitting that spot. Next up, we went to Country Club Plaza. It's a gorgeous outdoor shopping area that was actually built in 1923, but if you look at the buildings, you would never guess. It almost looks like some of them have been renovated, so they may have been. If they have been, let me know. If I didn't know that already, I would love to kind of correct my own knowledge on that, but it is so pretty. They have so many great stores, coffee shops, restaurants, any Anything you're looking for would be right in that area. And what I've heard is that in the winter time, it has gorgeous lights, which I wish we could have seen, but unfortunately we didn't get to see that because it's the summer, but it was really beautiful. And there's a lot of other places in Kansas City that we didn't get an opportunity to visit, but it seems like a really, really cool town. And I hope we get another chance to get there. Next up, I want to talk about what I've been watching and what I've been listening to. So I have been listening to some podcasts, one with my husband and then one on my own. So the one with my husband I've been listening to is called Revolutions. It's been around for quite some time and we're starting from the very beginning, but it is so interesting. It's like listening to a story because history is, it's a story, right? So what he does is he's going through different periods of revolutions. And the first one we've been listening to is King Charles, which was in the mid 1600s, early 1600s to mid 1600s. And it is so interesting. It is fascinating. We actually started listening to it on our trip to Kansas City and then we listened to it on our way back too. But it is so interesting and the way this guy tells you about the history makes you on the edge of your seat. What's going to happen next? Who are all these characters and how do they come into play? It's really well done. So he starts off talking about King Charles the first in the 1600s. He was King James's son. He wasn't supposed to take over, but his older brother died. So he ended up being the next king and his whole argument with parliament where he kept dissolving them. So everything I've listened to so far is super interesting. I'm really happy to get to listen to it because I love when my podcasts teach me something. I like funny podcasts or educational podcasts. Those are the two that I listen to. So this one definitely falls under education but it also is fun to listen to and it's not gonna put you to sleep. Whereas the other podcast I'm listening to, which I'm sure some of you guys have heard of, is called Office Ladies. So if you ever watched The Office, then you would love this podcast. Basically what it is, is that the woman who plays Pam, Jenna Fisher, and the woman who played Angela, Angela Kinsey, talk about each episode and review it and get people from the show or who produce the show to come talk about it. And it is so fun, so much fun to listen to. And if you have a Netflix subscription, you can actually watch the episodes before you listen and you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember this thing. Or if you've seen it a bunch of times, you'll already recognize it. But Jenna Fisher and Angela Kinsey were actually best friends when they were on The Office. And now, of course, they're still best friends. So when they talk about this, it's from this perspective of, oh, we're friends, we were there together, we lived it together. And it's just a ton of fun to listen to. I've learned so much about the different things in each episode, which is really fun to hear. And it's just something to kind of have on in the background while I'm exercising or cleaning the house or whatever else I'm doing. It's not something I have to focus really hard on, which is nice. It's not like I have to remember all of this information. It's just stuff that is enjoyable. It's like hanging out with your friends. So if you haven't checked out that podcast, I would definitely recommend listening to it. And if you've watched The Office, let me know in the comments below who's your favorite character and what's your favorite season. I'd really love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. 
Who's my favorite character? I mean, okay, right? Favorite character is hard because there's your favorite character who you identify with and you enjoy as a person, and then there's your favorite character who cracks you up and is ridiculous. Dwight is probably my favorite character who's just ridiculous because he goes into crazy directions that you'll never expect and it's so funny, ridiculous, I love it. And then my favorite character who I like, who is like someone I'd wanna hang out with, I would say Jim, but I don't like pranks. I think they're funny in the show for what they are, but I just don't like pranks generally. So I would guess it would be Pam, because even though Pam is pranky, she's not really as pranky as Jim, and I understand where she's coming from, I understand why she's living her life the way that she is, although it's difficult for me at the beginning when she doesn't just come out and say how she feels. I'm one of those people who can't keep that bottled up at all. So to watch her struggle with that for the first three seasons is difficult, but it makes sense for her character and for their arc. But that would be probably mine. And then the season that's my favorite would probably be the season where Jim and Pam get together for the first time. Love that season. So what I watched this week was Enchanted. I of course watched Enchanted growing up, and I loved the idea that there was the girl who was in the cartoon and she came to New York and lived as a real person. I also felt very connected with Giselle. I felt like she and I were very similar <laughs> because of course I picture myself as a Disney princess. That's the dream, but also, her relationship to positivity and seeing the best in everyone is just something that I relate to. It's something that I think I do kind of naturally. So I very much understood her perspective. And then Patrick Dempsey's character, who's much more of a realist and can be a little bit more cynical, but is uplifted by her. I always thought was a really interesting interplay between their characters and the fact that she doesn't end up with the prince, but that Idina Menzel ends up with the prince, so it works out. But what's funny is that as I was watching this movie, I started to realize that I really think that Patrick Dempsey's character is similar to my husband. And so it kind of ended up playing out in the same way as in the movie, like in my life, where Giselle is more of the positive one and she makes him more positive, but he brings a little bit more reality to the relationship. That's definitely my relationship with my husband. He's more realistic, I'm more of an optimist, and it just balances us out. And it's really funny to watch that because I was like, why does this guy seem so familiar? <laughs> And it's funny that I always liked his character because I ended up with someone similar to him. So that was a really funny thing to notice as I was watching the movie. But also I love Enchanted. I love the music. I love the dancing. I just always loved that part. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the ending, mostly because I don't wanna see Patrick Dempsey get taken by the dragon. It's not really like she saves him, but he's still a damsel in distress. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that at the end, but I did like the story up till then. The part that I didn't like was her dress. She's wearing gorgeous dresses throughout the movie. And then her big reveal dress is that, that purple thing. I wasn't a fan. Also, her hair was so beautiful throughout the movie and then she just gets it straightened. I understand they're trying to transition her from cartoon to reality, but I like the way she looked before. <laughs> But let me know in the comments what you guys think about her dress at the end, if you've seen Enchanted, and what your favorite song is from that movie. Mine is How Do You Know. How do you know? But that's it for today's episode of The Scoop. Let me know what you guys have been up to this week. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please subscribe to my channel and blog if you haven't already. Head over to my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and follow me there. Hit that notification bell to get notified of all my new videos. Hit that like button. Please head over to classicallyabby.locals.com if you'd like to support my channel, see more of this content, and be part of our community. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!